five minutes it's going to be an amazing experience we're going to enter into a very special session called prayer graph it's going to be highly introspection we're all going to self-examine our spiritual stand with God I want to request our volunteers to kindly distribute the graph let us see it would be nice if we can distribute um, one for every two if it's a husband and wife you can just give one please get your graph This whole session has to end by 5.15. I am a very, very strict pastor when it comes to time. I don't believe in wasting even a single second. So we're going to be very brief. I hope all of you have had. I'm going to give you some statistics just to challenge you that you will know how much time you spend in prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a beautiful paradigm. That's the model. I want you to look here. The Lord's Prayer. If you look at the Lord's Prayer, the first eight statements, it can be divided like a pie chart. And it has equal or proportionate, or what should I say, graphing. For example, you look at all the different colors. Our Father in heaven. Good. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. We need to be very proportionate in our spiritual life. In other words, we have to strike a balance. But do you know many of us have a problem in our prayer graph. You know prayer experience do you know just for example let me show you how most of our prayers look like father is very small god is small kingdom give us today our daily bread 79 percent in other words if you have this your prayer graph is in very deep trouble look at this I'm also going to give you a small assignment for one minute. All of you look at your graph. Everybody look at your graph. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is every day. Just put. Don't show it to anybody. If it's married couples, you can share because you know each other's graph. This is talking about the frequency of prayer. I want all of you to write x-axis y-axis every five centimeters right sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday and on the x-axis that refers to minutes 0 5 10 15 20 25 it refers to minutes i'm going to give you one minute exactly one minute monday how many minutes do you pray just put the graph do we have enough graphs for everyone okay i jenny i want you to distribute to everyone because some of them are very hesitant because the wife is watching the husband this is a very very intriguing time please let's do this i'm asking you to check your prayer life yeah just distribute everything that we have i will be happy if all of us but one thing you should not be tempted to look at the achievement husband if you pray for 20 minutes don't tell hey you are praying only for eight minutes i'm a better husband no it is not achievement we are talking about the quality time you need to spend with god can anybody recite first thessalonians 5 17 pray without 
seizing. Just take hold. Just put. Monday, how many minutes? If you are not praying, don't put anything. Be honest. Let the graph go down. Tuesday, how many minutes? I'm just presuming that at least one hour or below you pray. Just try to put. Look at your graph. Look at your graph. Let's take another 30 seconds. All what the Holy Spirit is challenging you is that how is your prayer graph? How is your prayer graph? Okay, look here my friends. Another one is that people want to have revival without reading the Bible. Everything is based on research and self-introspection. You've got to have self-examination. Look at this. When was the last time you voluntarily read the Bible? Was it last week? Last month? Last six months? In the last year? Some of us have never read the Bible for the past three years. Or three years plus. The last one is never. How is your prayer life? The Holy Spirit is challenging you right now in Finster Hall. How is your prayer life? Now I'm going to take you to two great places. One is the high, the other one is the low. We call it the spiritual high and the spiritual low. Look at this. All of us live in the natural realm. But there are times you pray so hard and so deeply and earnestly and intensely you hit the high. It is called the mountain, the spiritual high. But there are times you just don't pray. You just don't read the Bible. You hit what is called as the spiritual low, opposite of mountain, the valleys. I will show you another one. This is for those that are married. Please look at this graph. I have a presentation for two hours. It will blow your mind. And it will blow your mind in such a way your life will never be the same. Married couples. Look at this. How many years are you married? One, two, three, four. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> but I want you to look at the x-axis. I'm not asking for how long you're staying in the same house. For how long you have the marriage certificate? No. How long you and your partner have knelt down and prayed together? It is called oneness in prayer. Your graph, if it goes like this, it is going all the way to heaven. If your graph is going down, you know where is your marriage heading to. I want you to know, without prayer, no marriage will survive. If you're having troubles right now in your marriage, it's because you are not praying enough. Please look at this. I'll show you another graph. This is even more amazing. Children, I want you to listen to me. Those that are upcoming. Do you know what is the difference between a successful pastor and an unsuccessful pastor? A successful pastor does not get a PhD from IS. A successful pastor spends time in prayer. They did a heavy research and they came up with a prayer graph. 83% of those pastors who brought many souls to Christ in one year are those that have prayed every day on their knees. But there were some pastors who never prayed, who never read the Bible, their spirituality is 19%. That's why you have a strong pastor and a weak pastor. How does a church grow? In discipleship, nurture and church growth. I want to challenge the students. You and I have only one job. Whether you are a doctor of medicine, you are a psychologist or psychiatrist or engineer, you have to win souls for Christ. Amen? He that winneth souls is wise. How can you win? You can never win without prayer. Let me just quickly go. Uh, I don't have time to go. Look at all this. 
I want you to look at this huge bridge. I want you to look at the hanging bridge. What holds you, what you have gained in IS, what you have gained in AUP is only 2%. Those that waste our time studying PhD for four years, two years, only two percent. Your whole life hangs only in prayer. I want to tell you a real story. I had the privilege to go and preach in Canada. I was in Toronto. They said, we are going to take you to a place. They took me to Niagara Falls and they told me a story. There was a guy who tied a tightrope across Niagara. Do you know what it is to tie a tightrope across Niagara? And the man walked. Everybody clapped. And the man said, I'm going to walk with a wheelbarrow. Wow. To walk on Niagara with wheelbarrow? And he walked from one end to the other. Every end. How many of you have the faith that I will go across again? Everybody said. Then he gave a call. How many of you want to jump into the wheelbarrow? I will take you safe. Not one guy jumped into the wheelbarrow. You can have a PhD. You can have a psychology. Do you have the faith in your prayer life? Look at this. Education, intelligence, 2%. <clears throat> I want you to look at this. Marriage and divorce. In 1860... Only one, one divorce. Look here. We are talking about annual divorce rate. We are talking about 1860. You come all the way to 1880. Do you know what did they do till here? They're praying and praying. After that, we had a movement in the U.S. called God is Dead Movement. Have you heard about that? The U.S. believe God exists no more. God is dead. So people were so confused. One day in the newspaper, in the obituary section, there was a section, God is dead. It came in the newspaper. They took this and went to Billy Graham. Billy Graham, what do you have to say? In the US, we hear, God is dead. Billy Graham gave one sentence. I talked to God this morning. And he is very much alive. <clears throat> That's why that one man changed the whole world. What about you and me? We are milligram, not milligram. We don't pray. I wish I could show you beyond 1980. I didn't want to show you. You will be amazed. It is going beyond the graph. Look at this. They took a statistics. Each church, how much they are paying, praying. Sometimes, some go minus 18. In other words, there is no talk about prayer. I don't want to say anything. I want you to show another prayer graph. September 11, 2001. Do you remember the day? I want you to know. The first crash was over there. Second tower, another crash. And then you know what happened in Pentagon. Then the first tower literally collapsed. The second collapsed. Exactly after this, for the next three weeks, all the churches were full. All the prayer centers they could not handle for three weeks. After three weeks, Nobody even bothered about prayer. Friends, how is your prayer graph? Let me show you another one. Many of us like to pray in the church, but when it comes to praying alone, we don't like to pray. Look at this. There is something called individual prayer. There is a frequency. You know, all this. 
This is how they pray on a daily basis. I want you to look at this. How is your prayer life? Last but not the least. I have lost a few of my very good friends who I know and I trust. Can I ask Dr. and Mrs. Severian to come forward? Please come forward. You're going to listen to some live testimonies. I especially ask three doctors to share their testimony. Thank you, doctors, for choosing to come to our place. Dr. Julie Severian, the specialist is an EMT. I'm going to say something, and I know you will not like me to say that, but I want to say that. In the whole of Philippines, in the whole of Philippines, in the whole exam, he's second. And we praise God for his Adventist. Amen? Amen. He will never tell you this. I know he may not like it, but God will forgive me. I say this for the glory of God. Standing next to him is his beautiful wife. Her name is Portia Severin. She's a dermatologist. She gave her some ointment or some medication. My wife started using My wife looks three times more beautiful these days. <laughs> I want her to treat my wife every three months. <laughs> I had the privilege to attend a certain meeting in a place called Amy Ramona in Takaka. That's the first time I came across this couple and I heard the testimony. I'm going to give them six minutes. I want you to listen to what they have to tell you. It is all about God. Welcome, Dr. and Mrs. Sibri. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Um, I was telling Pastor Paul, Pastor Paul, what did I say there that you want me to speak here? <laughs> what, did I, what did I say again? So, uh, I think he was so impressed with what we said, which uh, I didn't actually remember what I said, but just to give a background, uh, I practically lived half my life here in AUP. If you know, for some of you who know me, I took my elementary, high school, and even college here. It was still PUC. So I grew up in this place. And uh, coming here is like a homecoming for me. And uh, he wanted me to speak about God in me. And throughout my life, uh, my parents are actually, they worked here. They used to work because they are already retired. My mom passed away a few years ago. And I have seen in their life uh, how faithful they were to serving God. And uh, somehow this has rubbed on me, and I see them every day. And uh, as I look back on my life, uh, I know that I'm still a work in progress, because as we all are, we are, you know, we're all a work in progress, and uh, we're still not there. We're still not perfect. We need always God's grace. But I've seen how God has been... Uh, so faithful to us. I'm sharing this. Uh, I'm not very comfortable doing this, actually, Pastor Paul. <laughs> I'm not comfortable with speaking in front of uh, many people because I'm a, I'm a man of few words and I don't usually speak in front. But the pastor is very compelling. <laughs> That's why I'm here. And, and so my wife is here also. And uh, as I can recall my life, I've been here in AUP for the last maybe half of my life, and uh, so when I've seen how God has been very faithful to me and my family, despite the fact that uh, many times uh, I haven't been that faithful Adventist, as you might call it, and uh, He's been faithful, He's blessed me with a lot of things. Uh, recently, I have I have uh, had a very uh, shall we say, uh, heartbreaking experience. As Pastor Paul has mentioned a while ago, God breaks you, but He makes you, but He also builds you up. And I have this uh, experience which, uh, well, for some of you it might not be traumatic, but it actually broke me down. And I'm thankful that God has been there. And I want to thank God that I also met. Uh, we have a ministry in church in Pasay because I go to Pasay now. I changed my membership from PIC to PAC, okay? <laughs> I, because I live near Pasay, okay? 
And uh, we have this ministry, Christian couples circle. I'm really very happy that I have been a part of this group uh, because I have been blessed. I think one of the blessings that I've come, uh, that I've seen is to be able to hear Pastor Paul and his word and how God uses him for the glory of God. And that in my life, I've seen God work uh, miracles. And sometimes I remember uh, this verse in Jeremiah 33, verse 3. It says, uh, Call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things that you, that you do not know. And uh, one of the blessings in my life also has been meeting my wife in medical school. Uh, it has been a blessing. Uh, marriage, you know, is an up and down thing, like a graph. <laughs> Sometimes you're down. Hopefully not always down, but you're always up and, you know, have this balance. And I think, I think it's true for most, for, for all couples, I should say. It's true for all couples. And uh, I praise God that she gave me a wife who's very understanding, uh, is very kind, and for uh, not only beautiful, and she knows how to cook very well. <laughs> because you know, guys, uh, ladies, the way, the, may, the way to a man's heart is true is, I know you're fasting, so tell, maybe you'll be, <laughs> you'll be hungry for late, but uh, yeah, I've been blessed not only uh, tremendously by God and uh, Family has been a blessing to me. Yes, he also blessed me with two wonderful kids. Kids can be challenging, you no, know, Pastor? They can be very challenging, but you know, it's, it's, it's God's gift to us. And we pray uh, that God will guide us in our journey and we can bring our kids also to uh, come to love God and to serve Him as well. Uh, it's different. My, I told Pastor, I, would be, I might say a different thing today than what I said in Ember Ramon because. I couldn't remember what I said there. <laughs> but uh, what I can just say is that in my life, I've seen the power of God, His faithfulness to us, despite our unfaithfulness to Him, but He's a very faithful God. As far as I can remember, I was asking Pastor Paul, what would I tell them? But he said, uh, you just recall what you have said in Emmy Ramona. As far as I can remember, he told me, you just relate how you met in college. Is that right, Pastor? Our, our, our journey during medicine, uh, College of Medicine. Again, life is so hard. We've been through many uh, trials and um, testings for the past years. We finished College of Medicine for four years, then we took again the uh, residency training for three years. It's been hard for us. What you want to hear from me is that during our residency training, we had a hard time, but we're together. We work as a team. You heard in our story that uh, before, I wake up early and I stay in the car to stay with him and wait for 8 a.m. to open the OPD. And it's, and he do his job as early as 5 a.m. doing the operation. This is the one thing that you remember, right? Uh, we sacrificed a lot. We, di we did not have uh, kids as early as uh, residency training in the first part, but during the latter part, because uh, we have duties to perform in the hospital. I had my pregnancy during the third year of residency, and he was so scared because I was left alone at home. Um, I was pregnant then. He was thinking there could be fire at any time and I would be dead. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I go to the hospital all by myself for checkup. And uh, the one thing that he remembers is that when I gave birth, right, Pastor? I was alone in the recovery room and I was telling the, the nurse, I can go out now to the, to my to my uh, room because I can now lift my foot because my husband is still on duty the next day and my mother is waiting for me in the room to take care of me. As you can see, life is so hard for us because we have to deal with those situations that we cannot avoid. But we help each other all the time. We want to. I always. Um, Sometimes when he is sad, when he has problems, I always tell him, God is there. 
we can do it because we are together. In college, we, are, we work as a team. He helps me, I help him during the test, during the reviews. And God is so good to us because all those years have passed, but we knew that He is always there for us to provide our needs, not only financially, socially, but emotionally as well and spiritually. We grew together for 17 years, right? And uh, we were also married in Finster Chapel, for your information. <laughs> so this place is very uh, special to us because we were married here not so many years ago, and uh, it's been a blessing coming back here. And uh, this uh, prayer session has been such a blessing to us. We thank God for uh, everything that's been happening to us. We praise Him. And uh, we continue to pray that in your life, you can see the power and the faithfulness of God if you, keep, if you just be faithful to Him. All these years, we realize that happiness is a choice. We are happy for what we have, for what we are and what God is giving us each day. And that's it. Thank you so much. Shall we say amen to that? Amen. I wanted to hear only one word from them and it came out. If you have listened to this couple, there's only one word that will keep coming. One team, one team, one team. What is the lesson? Husband and wife, we don't belong to opposite team. We belong to one team. <laughs> I want to especially say that to the young people. Um, it's a very, very prestigious, well-accomplished doctors in Manila. You will not believe. But the humility. Another reason why I wanted him to share this testimony, he's been born raised here in this campus. He also told me he was married in this hall. I said, then you have to share this testimony. We want to praise God. I'm going to invite another doctor, he's a professor, Dr. Jamilo De Castro. Will you please come forward? He comes all the way. One team, one team, yes, both of you. I can say quite a lot of things, but I want to say one thing about this couple. I told him, sir, you are actually a right man in the wrong profession. In a day, at least three to four times we talk. And my wife always says, what is so special that you both always talk, man, secretly? I said, don't worry, this is all about spiritual things. Uh, I came across him in a very, very beautiful setting. One day I was in IS. He just came and introduced himself. For, it's almost like six months we've known each other. Uh, Pastor Hatsa will share another testimony. He is a physician, a doctor. He's a very good specialist in one area. This is his wife, Mrs. Kina. They are blessed with two children. I do not want to say much. I told him, I want you to speak to us for three minutes about my answered prayer. God bless. Dr. Jen. I think uh, three minutes is not enough, Pastor Paul. Uh, I've seen a lot of students here, and uh, I just want to tell, if it's okay with Pastor Paul, two stories. One for the students, and one for the not students. Okay. Um, we belong to a very poor family, and uh, I, I'm a native of uh, Bicol. How many of you here have been to Bicol? If you know Mayun Volcano, that's where the Bicol is. Anyway, uh, so I don't know really during the time what course I should take. We're like four friends, and all of them are engineers except me. So I said, what should I take? So to make the story short, uh, somebody told me I should take something like Medtech. So I enrolled in AUP as a medtech. Okay. So after taking, finishing this course, uh, a lot of my classmates would like to go to med school, and we cannot afford. I went through my 
studies uh, doing canvassing work. How many of you here are doing canvassing work? Yeah, Sir Castle is doing that. So you know what? I I I did. I I go to Makati. You know that um, PLDT tower. You can't get through the tower unless you know somebody in the office for you to access yourself into the tower. So what I did, I went through the Health and Home magazine. I checked all those people being interviewed by the Health and Home and checked whether one of them is holding office in the PLD tower. Fortunately, one of them was working in the PLD tower. So I said, I would like to see this particular person holding office in that uh, tower. And he said, and the guard said, uh, does, this, does she know you? I said, probably, but I, I know her. I didn't tell her that I just read her name in the Health and Home magazine. Anyway, to make the story short, I was able to get through the tower. And that's where I came back and forth, earning my allowance for my school days while I'm studying in AUP because uh, we don't have money to really support myself. Now, I went to med school, and the bad thing about med school is that I don't have any money to also buy books. I was fortunate to get uh, some sponsors, scholarships, but I don't have any money to buy the book. I only buy one book. Julie, I only bought Dr. Julie. I only bought Neuroanatomy by Carpenters. And you know where I bought that? In Quiapo for 20 pesos. That's the only book I got. And so I finished my first year and somebody was, uh, I was thinking, should I still continue because I really don't have money to support my allowances, my daily needs, my mother would just give me 50 pesos. Just a medical student having a 50 peso allowance. Can you survive with 50 pesos? You wouldn't be able to survive. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. Lord, should I continue or not? So one day, somebody knocks at the door and an Indonesian friend came in bringing two boxes and a bike and a typewriter. I said, what is this for? Jim, I won't be able to go through my med school anymore. So is it okay for you to have my books? I said, of course, very well accepted. And when I opened the box, these are the books I needed until I'll finish my med school. Amen for that. So those are the books I needed. And when I reached the clerkship, which is the fourth year, he came back to me and said, Jim, can I get back my book? Sure, you can have all your books. <laughs> so I returned all his books again. So I only have one book left. And you can remember that's Neuroanatomy by Carpenter. So I'm just saying, for, for you students, don't even think about having so many problems that will prevent you from going to school. God will always make a way. Okay, that, that's for the students, Pastor Paul. Is that all right? Okay. Now my other problem, my other story is about for professionals. Last 2005, six, yes, I was already a doctor. I lost my job. I was forced to quit to lose my job. I wouldn't tell you the, the reason why. Enough for you to know, I lost my job. And losing jobs means that you cannot anymore support your family. And we just got married. We're like one year. one year married and you lose your job. 
So we're expecting a baby in like yeah. So I said, where can I get money for our family? To make the long story short, I was bothered so much at night that I could not actually breathe. And I had to call my wife. I said, let's just kneel down and pray. I could not breathe. I had to go to the ref, get water, just drink. And I would tell her, read Psalms aloud. Loud enough that I can be deaf. Whatever you read in the Psalms, just read it. And so he reads it. And it was like I would be experiencing nervous breakdown. For two years, we have no work. For two years, we have no work. And we were staying before in Paranaque. And I was forced to move here in Santa Rosa. I didn't know why God would like me to go to Santa Rosa. I said, this is an empty place. There's no hospital. Southern Luzon is still being built. And it's like on the fourth floor yet. So if you go and apply in that hospital with only four floors and still being built, nobody will be there to be your patient, right? And the bad thing about this is when I lose my job, the person who actually make it possible to lose my job is trying to monitor me and telling all the hospitals not to accept me. So in short, if you are seeing a hospital being built and no patient, I'm sure that the doc, that person who is trying to catch up with me and telling everybody that I should not be accepted would not bother to tell the owner of that hospital not to accept me because there's no patient anyway. But that was the time when actually I see patients at home. They call me, I go to their house, and the money that they gave me are just enough for us. That was one of the hardest times in our lives. And my wife would cry and would say, Lord, why are you letting this happen to us? That experience of losing job and I would now tell you what's the reason for losing my job. It's just to stand for what is right. Are you willing to stand for what is right and lose your job? Are you willing? And God just opened the way for us here in Santa Rosa. And I tell you, the rest of the story is history. And just God's blessings just pour in, I could not explain to you. What I'm just saying is that you just have to trust God. Whatever trials is giving you. Why would God let me leave that hospital out there? Because God would like to open another opportunity for you to go and do your ministry somewhere else. If that is what's happening to you right now, don't blame God because God has a better way for you. If that happens to us and that happens to you, don't be discouraged. All you have to do is to trust Him because those two years, and dami naming utang, we're in debt for two years because we cannot support ourselves. But God just opened the way for us. And I praise God, we praise God that He has given us that opportunity and we can now support other ministries and share our blessings to other people. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.